Now at 10, the excessive heat will continue for the weekend, but big changes coming next week. Plus, the 4th of July is right around the corner, and two Pine Belt cities are teaming up to celebrate. We'll have the details straight ahead. And the Mississippi Democratic Party holding a town hall to address recent hospital closures. What they say needs to be done to stop the crisis. Your news at 10 starts now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Thanks for joining us on this Friday night. I'm Michael Clark. As you've been doing all week, you're going to need to keep the water bottles handy over the weekend and, of course, some fans blowing on you because it's going to be hot yet again. So let's get right over to Rex for more on the heat that is sticking around for at least a couple days, right, Rex? Yeah, for the weekend, then it's going to start cooling off a little bit. It'll still be hot, but we're going to get back to normal. If you saw some lightning to the north earlier this evening, there was a a thunderstorm up that way in Smith County. So here, here are the remnants of it on the radar right now. A uh, very light rain moving into Hattiesburg, but I doubt we didn't see any raindrops with this. All right, here's the uh, forecast. Alert day is uh, scheduled for Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be in the upper 90s to around 100 tomorrow. The, but the heat indices are going to be rough on you. Uh, currently, there's an excessive heat warning in effect from 10 o'clock tomorrow morning until 9 p.m. Saturday. I think they'll do the same thing on Sunday. Then after that, we'll be done with the heat ridge for a while, and we'll start getting back to normal. Today's high got up to 98. Average high is 91. The record 102 on this date back in 1954. But look at the record, 56 in 1974. That would feel nice right now. Michael? Sherwood Rex, thanks. Well, Hattiesburg Mayor Toby Barker will soon take on another important role. He's the new president of the Mississippi Municipal League. Barker ascended uh, to kind of the, the office of president during the MML's 92nd annual conference this past week on the Gulf Coast. Barker was first elected by MML members to the office of second vice president back in 2021. That positioned him to move up to president this year. Barker spoke at a news conference today in the Hub City about the upcoming holiday event called the Star Spangled Celebration on the River. I think one of the big things we have to continue to do is, is to champion a strong legislative agenda. Uh, the last two sessions with Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman and Speaker uh, Gunn have been very successful for cities and we want to see that commitment continued and so uh, part of our role will be to continue bringing cities together listening to what their needs are and then going to the capital to champion uh, not only policies that are good for cities but policies that are good for all mississippians the mml conference also presented the hub city with a best overall award for its pocket museum in alley and as we just mentioned, the Hub City and the Friendly City are partnering for a red, white, and blue event like no other here in the Pine Belt. Monday, July 3rd, Hattiesburg, Petal, Forest County, and corporate sponsors will all team up to host the fifth annual Star Spangled Celebration on the Leaf River. The family-friendly event will take place simultaneously at Hattiesburg's Chain Park and then also over at Petals River Park from 6 until 10. A joint fireworks display over the river will take place at 9 o'clock. City leaders, economic developers, and sponsors met this morning at Chain Park to talk about the free celebration. Hey, July 3rd. My favorite thing about this is seeing the entire community from all walks of life and all backgrounds and neighborhoods come together. Uh, for our nation's birthday. At first, I'm sure when they were talking about it, they didn't think much about it, but now it's grown where thousands and thousands of folks uh, are, are participating in this. New this year, an ice cream eating contest for kids under the age of 12. That will take place at Chain Park. And if you enjoy fishing and you don't have a license, good news tonight. July 4th is a free fishing day, according to the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks means you can enjoy fishing without a license on any public water throughout the state. There are 19 state lakes and 18 state parks to choose from, including some lakes here in the Pine Belt. Keep in mind, while a license isn't required to sport fish, permits to fish a state-owned lake will still be required. Mosquitoes are a part of life here in South Mississippi, but there are things you can do besides bug spray to protect yourself from bites. While it might not seem like it, there are ways to decrease your chances of being a target for mosquitoes, like wearing loose fitting clothing to cover your arms and your legs. You can also spray for mosquitoes. That's what some cities in our area do, like Hattiesburg. They've been doing it for years. 
But with the rainy conditions we've had over the past few weeks, although maybe not this week, they've not been able to spray as much as they are used to. Just prevents uh, the, the constant uh, harassment of mosquitoes in, this, in the south area, this Hattiesburg area, um, protecting our kids from, from and our elderly for uh, transmission of, of disease from mosquito bites. Now, if you'd like to find out when your city sprays for mosquitoes, you can contact your local city hall. Hospital closures and their impact to rural communities being addressed by the Mississippi Democratic Party. Today, the party held a public conference calling for state leaders to take action. Rosalind Anderson has the latest tonight. The Mississippi Democratic Party held a town hall meeting Friday to focus on hospital closures and the impact on rural residents. Dr. Torrance Green says heart attack and stroke victims' lives are in jeopardy when traveling an hour or more for medical attention. This issue is not one that I think that, that our government can uh, push down the road while we amass um, surpluses uh, because essentially our people are dying. The party says the closures also create a lack of mental health care access and increase unemployment rates in the surrounding community. This is not a partisan issue. Uh, uh, whether you are a Republican, a Democrat, or an independent, we need uh, our citizens to have uh, access to adequate medical care. The Mississippi Republican Party secretary and former Hines County Chairman Pete Perry says many hospitals that are closing have less than one person staying overnight, and some hospitals are also closing their doors because of mismanagement. They want the state to step in and save the hospitals, and they want to do it with Medicaid expansion, and Medicaid expansion is to provide health care for the poor, not to save hospitals. We're hoping that they educate themselves get out to vote for the candidates on the state level, all the way to the community local level. In Jackson, Roslyn Anderson. Well, with feels like temperatures well over 100 degrees, pedal coaches and parents are helping to make sure youth baseball players are staying cool and hydrated during a summer tournament that's going on. Tonight was the second night of the 10U District 8 Youth Baseball Tournament out at Robert E. Russell Sports Complex. Eight different teams from across the Pine Belt will play during the weekend long event. And in addition to the tournament, the teams are also trying to stay cool. Every second and fourth inning, we're giving them a five minute break. So for water break for just because of the heat wave came in. So we're trying to do all the rest and water and keep them hydrated best as, as we can. Now, another way they've tried to make sure that players stay safe, changing some game times as well. Tonight's game was at 8 o'clock with Pedal taking on Oak Grove for schedules. And more information, you can visit the Pedal Sports Association's Facebook page. All right, still ahead for you at 10 o'clock. Today's Supreme Court decision blocks President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. So what's next? We'll have the details when we come back.